Hello YouTube, it's Barbara Jean. This is not going to be as long as the last video, but I had some interesting insight into my dream that I had, and I think you're going to find this interesting. I was looking up a couple of things. Um, let me just first read a couple of verses that I read the, the other day in my video. Um, I want to read, I just want to read the same verses that I read last time. See if I can find the right one I want. Uh, let's see. Job 37, 18. Thou hast with him spread out the sky, which is strong and as molten looking glass. Um, uh, teach us what we shall say unto him, for we cannot order our speech by reason of darkness. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 10. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. For when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. That reminds me of my dream. My, I met my little sister who was still a child. She was only six years old. And she said in the dream that she still had something to learn at that age. Uh, for we, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face know that no, I know in part, but then I shall know even as I am also known. Um, so we are only given partial vision. We're only given partial understanding. We only see things. We only see, have limited vision. Okay, I want to I want just emphasize that part for a moment. Um, no, did I want to read anything else at this moment? Revelations 21, 18, and the building of the wall of it was of, of Jasper, talking about the new Jerusalem, was as of Jasper, and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass. Okay, that's enough for now, because I just want to make this a short video. I want to just talk about a couple of things that I discovered since I, you know, had made my last video, some things I was thinking about. Um, first of all, I want to tell you what the name Raphael, the angel Raphael is. I didn't even look that up. There's a lot of things I didn't do. I'm going to tell you what the name Raphael or who the angel Raphael is. This was very interesting. Raphael is an archangel and in, he's, a Rapha, he's the archangel in uh, Judaism, Christianity, and in Islam. And he performs all manners of healings. Let me see if I can find it. Um, Archangel Raphael is the supreme leader in the angelic realm, and the chief role is support, heal, and guide in manners involving health. Raphael means God heals or he who heals in Hebrew. Many believe that it is derived from the Hebrew word Roph, that's R O P H E, which means medicine doctor. But he is known for all sorts of healing, that, that's his place. And I was taken up to it's um he's he is known as the angel of healing, is he is full of compassion on people who are struggling physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually. Raphael works to bring people people closer to God so they can experience the peace of God wants to give that that God wants to give them. He's often associated with joy and laughter. Now, this is interesting because I was saying to the Lord, and I, you didn't know this, but I was praying, Lord, I need to find my joy. Because I was not feeling very joyful, especially in the last few years since I've been going through so much physical physical problems, so many physical ailments and different things. And, different. and I was saying to the Lord, I was losing my joy. I was praying to the Lord, I'm losing my joy. I need to find my joy. And then I, when I find this out, I'm like, this is amazing. And the Lord was showing me through these things that I was going through and what I was seeing, that he was not just healing me. He was healing people on the other side. He was giving me emotional healing because I needed still some healing from the death of my sister. Now, what was interesting was I said about my little sister, she was in this dream, which which seems like, uh, like um out of the blue or some kind of strange incident. Why would my sister be in this dream? But she was in this dream and she was in an immature state. And she said, there was still something I need to learn at this age. Of, like she was, she died at six. 
And I asked her why she was still six years old. And she said she, there was something she still needed to learn at that age. Now, I was thinking about all the people I was meeting in my dream. They were all under some sort of um, emotional or spiritual need to to uh, they needed to find some truth and that they hadn't didn't truth they didn't learn here on earth so they had to learn this truth in heaven and god was giving them the opportunity to grow up to mature interesting also i looked up the word my, my little sister's name is sandra it's a shortened version of alexandra it is a form of alexander or alexander the great Alexander means defender of the people. Now, I've said before in one of my pre previous videos, many, I don't know how long ago, but one of my, um, a couple of my previous videos, I said the church of Smyrna, I said Smyrna, I always get it wrong. Smyrna in the book of Revelation, let's see if I can find it here, book of Revelation chapter two, we have the church of Smyrna, who is the persecuted church. Now, I said in uh, in previous videos that the church of Smyrna was a church that dies in, in its immaturity. In other words, they're martyred, but they're, they're martyred in their immaturity and they become um, the army of God. God is going to use the church of Smyrna who have been persecuted and martyred for their testimony in Christ Jesus, and they were going to be the army of God. That is their purpose. That is why, another reason why he holds them back from the rapture. And I told you that too. He holds them back from the rapture, which you will see in Revelation chapter 6. The, this, the seven, one starts talking about the seven seals. You have the fifth seal and you see this, the church of Smyrna, which I know they are because of the, this, this thing that it says here. Um, um, they are crying out because they, they have been They've been martyred for the Lord. It says the uh, Revelation 6, 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for their testimony which they held. And they cried out with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, that, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were, were should be fulfilled. So they're told to wait. And they're told that they're to wait for all those who are going to be martyred as they were martyred, which means the church of Laodicea. They are to wait until all those who are going to be martyred before they receive their revenge and they're looking for revenge. Well, who's the person who people, he, he gives us the order of revenge to the army, the army of God, not to the bride of Christ, who is the church of Philadelphia. The church of Philadelphia is the bride of Christ. And I've proven that to you and I've shown you where, it, I'll, I'm not going to go through it right now, but the church of Philadelphia is the bride. The church of Smyrna is the army of God. And they're the ones who are crying for revenge. They're the ones who die in their immaturity. They're the ones who die without coming to the fullness of their maturity. And my little sister, who I said before, represents in my dreams, the church of Smyrna, the martyr church, says there's still something I need. To, I, I, I'm, I asked her, why are you still six years old? There's still something I need to learn at this age. <laughs> Isn't this amazing? So this is, to me, this is a, a sign that the Lord is saying, saying that the, the fifth seal has been opened or is on the verge of being opened, or it has been opened, or something. But it has to do with the fifth church of the fifth um, the fifth seal. But it also has to do with the church of Smyrna being the army of the defender of the people. And that's what Sandra means. Sandra, my Sandra, I kept crying in this dream. And when I held her in my arms, and that, that peace that I got from holding her and, and resolving some issues that I had emotionally with my sister, so I was resolving, the Lord allowed me through Raphael bringing me to this place, I resolved my feelings that I had, unresolved feelings that were keeping me from my joy and also spiritual healing for myself. But also it was a sign that um, um, the Lord was putting together his, his, his army and that the church of Smyrna was waiting for their, their moment to take their revenge on those people who had taken their lives. 
but he was holding them back. And I have proven to you that this is the church, this is the army of God, because they're told in the fifth seal by the Lord that they must wait. And they're given white robes, but they're told to wait. And then we have the rapture of the church, which happens in the sixth seal, which I've proven to you. Now we go to, I want to just prove to you that this, the church of Smyrna is the army of God by going back to Revelation chapter 2. And they had, they're, they, they're told that they defeat the synagogue of Satan as well. Um, I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them that say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those which shall that which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall come and cast some of you into prison, that you may try it, and that you may have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Um, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt by the second death. Now, that is an important phrase because that is, there is only one other place in the Bible that I know of that that term, the second death, is used. And that is in Revelation chapter 19. Uh, after the marriage of the, last, the, the supper of the Lord, the Lord comes back to the earth. Um, the third, this that thousand year reign, it says actually Revelation chapter 20, excuse me, it's Revelation chapter 20, the thousand year reign starts. And you see Jesus had come back with his army. Doesn't say that these people on horses were in their flesh, but he says he comes back with his army. Now, when he comes back at the thousand year reign, this is what it says about those who were resurrected at that time. Not everybody is resurrected at this time. Only those who are under this particular uh, seal, basically. And this is what it says. Revelation chapter um, tw 20, uh, Revelation 20, starting at verse 4. I'm going to start at verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. These are the souls that came back with Jesus. I saw the souls, not the not the, the flesh or the new new you know, uh, resurrected persons. These are the souls. These are bodiless souls. Okay. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. So those are the martyred saints and also the tribulation saints, because it's very specific that they did not receive the mark during the time of the beast. Neither had received the mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. It's not the rapture. This is the first resurrection. Af during the, um, uh, after the tribulation's over, Jesus comes back and then resurrects on the earth the martyred saints. Blessed is he who hath part in the first resurrection, on such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God in Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So this is, this is again, where I'm showing you the phrase, the second death. This is the only other place that I know of, besides in the church of Smyrna, that it mentions the second death. This is why I can say to you with affirmation and truth, that the martyr church is the army of God who rule and reign with Christ on earth. Not the bride. The bride is in New Jerusalem. She's already been raptured. She's already been translated because of her, 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 because she's in Christ. She's been baptized into Jesus and resurrected and indwelled with the Holy Spirit. She is in a different realm of salvation than those who have to still go through whatever it is they have to learn and go through. They rule and reign with Christ on earth. The army and the, the people who have been martyred who come back with Christ and are resurrected and they are not, they do not take, take place in the second death. Like I said, there it is right there. So anyway, get back to what I'm saying. So in this dream, my little sister, again, I'm going to tell you, she said she's still six years old. She dies in her immaturity. She represents in my dreams, the church of Smyrna. She says to me, there's still something I need to learn at this age. Okay. Now, everyone I meet on this, in this dream, they are going through a process of healing, spiritually maturing because of their immaturity. I'm also being healed because of meeting people, the couple of people that I needed to see, my sister and um, that man who was also in my dream, who I didn't don't remember who he was, but I, I recognized him in my soul for some reason. But there was some healing that needed to be taking place. And who brings me there? But the, the angel of healing, Raphael. I didn't even know that Raphael was the angel of healing. Amazing. So anyway, I know I'm talking very fast, but I'm trying to make this really quick. So anyway, I was thinking again about 
glass. And I was thinking about that verse that talks about how we are, we, we, we speak as a child. Again, it reminded me of my little sister who was still a child. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then, then I shall know even as I am also known. But then I shall know as I'm full. Or, be, or in other words, I shall be fully known. I shall know God fully and I shall be fully known. There will be no hidden things, no no, no secret places, no um, uh, hidden hidden agendas or, you know, what the, the, the occult is means hidden. There's no occult. There's nothing hidden. Um, and I was thinking about the mirror darkly, what Paul was saying about the mirror darkly. Now, this is just a fridge magnet. In fact, the, ma the, the magnet fell off. But it says, um, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Anyway, it's a, it's a little glass little thing. You're supposed to have a mirror on the back of it. I mean, a magnet on the back of it. But it's, you know, but you know, what I'm bringing, showing you this is that it's, it's not clear. <laughs> and it like, unlike, not unlike a mirror. And I was thinking, okay, if you're looking through a glass darkly or through a mirror, you can't see what's on the other side. But what's reflected is your own image and what's behind you. Just like what you're seeing with me. You're seeing, say, I'm, you're in my mirror and I'm looking in the mirror. What I see is a reflection of myself and what's what's behind me. Okay? What's behind me and my, my own image is what I see. And I started thinking about that. I started, started thinking, okay... If someone is not yet healed, it's like God puts his veil, what's talked about in the veil, uh, got that verse again here, I'll just tell you where I found that, um, 2 Corinthians 3, and how, um, Re Re 2 Corinthians 3, 18, but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of God are, uh, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So why am I telling you that? Because I was thinking, when you're looking in a mirror, you can't see what's beyond that mirror. You only see your own image and what's behind. And it's like God has put this mirror or this veil so that we could, when we look into this glass, this spiritual glass, we have to look at ourselves. We can't be pointing the finger at anybody else for any of our own mistakes. We have to look at ourselves. We have to see ourselves clearly to be able to be healed from our past. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And it's our past that usually holds us behind from looking into the future, from being able to proceed into the future, to be able to see clearly into the future or to see our destiny it's because we're still hindered by our past. So that veil is what we have to look in as what the Lord puts before us until we learn to see ourselves clear clearly. To see, be able to have the courage to look at all our ranks and all our, our spots and all our wrinkles in order to be able to smooth, be smoothed out from all those sins and all those, those past mistakes that we've made in order to proceed into the future. Now, I'm wearing glasses. They're clear. But I can't see clearly without them. But when I'm looking through these glasses, they're clear glass. And when I look through them, lo and behold, I can see I can see into my future. I can see what's in front of me. I can see clearly. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. <laughs> anyway, that's what that's what you do. That's what it's supposed to represent. So when God removes the veil, we are able to see our future. We're no longer hindered by our own image or by our own sins or by our own past. We are not hindered hindered by our, our by our past mistakes. Because we're no longer viewing the past. We have to look in the past while we're still under review, while we're still under probation, while we're still learning on this earth. We are we're, we can only really truly view the past and learn from our mistakes. This is making sense to you? We can only learn from our mistakes because we don't yet know what the future holds. Okay? So we learn by looking back and seeing our own image and how we are reflected in the glass. But when the veil is removed, we can see the future. And I think that's what the Lord was showing me in this dream. He was showing me, first of all, he was healing me of some past mistakes. But he was also showing me the future because I was looking through, I was seeing something on the other side that I couldn't see before. My vision was now becoming clearer towards something that was coming in my future. Also, 
uh, anyway, like I said, I, I, I just think this is amazing. So Sandra means defender of the people, which, um, like I said, represents the church of Smyrna, waiting for their time. God has put them on hold in their, in their state so that they continue to learn. So that they continue to learn until God has finished with them through what they have finished learning. And all those who are going to be martyred will come into the army of God. And they will be part of this ruling and reigning on earth. Now, what was interesting, also, I was thinking about those women who were sitting uh, at this picnic, picnic area, this rest area, and they were all ready for a party that I knew they weren't going to, but I was. And when I said to them, they said, well, are, are you going to the ball? And I said, yes, I'm going like Cinderella. I thought, I thought about it some more, and I thought, okay, what does that mean some more? I need to know, really, why did I say a boy like Cinderella? And I thought to myself, well, not only was she wearing glass slippers, and remember, shoes represent our feet. Uh, are beautiful are the feet that, that um, uh, oh, what is it, that verse? How beautiful are the feet that bring good news or the gospel? I don't know. You know what I'm referring to. I'm sure most of you know that's for this verse. How beautiful are the feet? So Cinderella's feet were clad in glass. Clear. You could see through them. They were crystal clear, like the city... Of the walls of the of the of the of New Jerusalem, clear as glass, and the feet represent the gospel or good news. Okay, so my Cinderella is wearing beautiful shoes on her beautiful feet that have brought the gospel of truth. Also, I was thinking how Cinderella goes to this ball, but she's helped to get there to marry the prince. She was, you see, Cinderella was being oppressed by her evil stepmother. She was being oppressed by her evil stepsisters. And she was going to be denied the, the, the opportunity to present herself to the prince, who by, by the end of the story, we all know, she ends up being chosen by the prince, even though she's a humble servant in the household of her stepmother, is chosen by the prince to be the next queen. And this is amazing. I was just thinking about this. I'm thinking to myself, she's, Cinderella is thinking, okay, she's never going to get there. She's not worthy. She doesn't have the beautiful dress to, to go and present herself. She doesn't, she's not beautifully clothed or clad. But who helps her? Helps her get to the ball, despite her evil uh, in-laws were trying to hinder her from her, her goal uh, to be, to be presented to the king and then also then chosen by the, the, the prince to marry. But what was interesting was that she was helped. Who was she helped by? Who comes to help Cinderella? The fairy godmother. Let's change the fairy. Let's remove the fairy out of there and put instead spirit godmother. The spirit godmother helps Cinderella get to the ball and get married to the prince. I was thinking, and I thought about later. I didn't. I didn't realize something. This is amazing. So, read Galatians four twenty five. We know Jerusalem is the mother of us all. She that is the name of the Holy Spirit. She is Jerusalem, and we are the bride of Christ called New Jerusalem. You can find that all through the New Testament. We are New Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit's name is Jerusalem, or Zion is another name for the Holy Spirit, but Jerusalem is her formal name. And we are called the Bride of Christ, New Jerusalem. And we are helped by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to get to the ball, the wedding supper of the Lamb, to marry our Prince Charming, Jesus Christ. Isn't that merit? And it makes it because I said in my dream, they said, are you going to the, uh, where, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? And I said, I'm going to go see Jesus. And they said to me, are you going to the ball? <laughs> and I said, yes, like Cinderella. I'm just, I'm blown away. I'm blown away because I, I didn't even think about it until just today. I'm thinking, there's got to be more meaning. It's something I'm missing here. And I started thinking, well, I need to look up the, the meanings of the name Raphael. What, 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 what's the, what is Raphael's job? And then I had to find out what the name of my sister was. Of course, it means defender. I didn't know. It was the shortened version of Alexander, defender of the people. 
thinking about the mirror darkly and how that, that veil is being removed and we're being able to see into the future. We're no longer hindered by our past, what's behind us, but we're now seeing into the future so that we can see clearly our future. We can see God. We can see our future. We're heading towards our future. We're, we're letting go of the past and we're heading towards our future and towards the kingdom of God. We're heading for that new Jerusalem. That's where we're going. And that's what the Lord has set for us. That is our future. I am amazed at the Lord. This dream was, I'm, I'm telling you, this dream was huge. It was huge. And I don't think I believe it was just for myself because that, that anointing was really heavy. And I think it was a sign for his people. We are heading for our future. We are going to see our future clearly. We're going to see the things of God more clearly. The things that have been hidden to us before are now going to be made visible. We're going to see I can see clearly now the rain is gone and I and I feel really blessed because I feel like the Lord is going to restore my joy which he's already apparently doing um I was praying Lord I need my joy I need some joy in my life I need to feel joy and then I had this these emotional healings in this dream it was truly a remarkable amazing dream anyway I hope you got something from it because I don't think it's just for myself I it although I felt it was personal I also felt it was meant for his church that we are we are going places we have never been before and it's truly exciting we're living in exciting times although some very sad times I keep thinking about awful awful things that are going on right now but there's also an amazing time that's I think why Satan is fighting so really hard I mean we're all shocked I think every last one of us can say that we're shocked at the length and the depths and the breadth of the things that Satan will do through the people on earth, through his tools on earth, that they will go to, to try to stop God and his agenda. But it's too late. They can't do it. And they're going, they're going slowly. I'm, I'm not going to say slowly. I think they're quickly going insane because they know that their time is short and they are going quickly insane. And we can see the insanity of these people and these judges who are passing absolutely ridiculous laws in Canada the most ridiculous laws they're passing horrible horrible laws to do everything in their power to try to stop God and his agenda well it's just that's impossible it's impossible but they're in their, their crazy nutty insanity think that they really can try to defeat God they can't they just can't and anyway I think we're heading for some amazing revelations some amazing times coming Anyway, um, I try to go as quickly as I could through this and uh, still was a half an hour. <laughs> anyway, I will talk to you later. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, please do so. Uh, there's still time. Um, repent and be baptized and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, Acts 2.38. God bless. I'll talk to you later.